Things hit the market the first quarter this year than there were in 2020 and 2019. So we know that there's listing opportunities out there, but we also know that the competition is fierce. And so you can't afford to miss out on these listing opportunities. And then when you get a chance at a presentation, you can't afford it. You can't afford to let someone else go in there and snatch it from you. So we have to make sure that we're doing everything possible to capture that list. Because remember, in today's market, for the part, if you have a listing, you're guaranteed to have a pay. Okay, so we have to make capitalizing on all these opportunities. So without further ado, let's go into these nine mistakes that you can't make. Now, I will preface this by saying some of these sound like no, duh, Robert, of course. Yet, I tell you, these mistakes happen all the time with people that you might think don't make these kind of mistakes. So it might, some of these might sound really simple. These might sound really dumb, but I'm, these things happen. Okay, no particular order, just like always. This is just, so no one mistake that you cannot make is being unprepared, being, un, being unprepared. So what does that mean? That means when, a, when you talk to somebody who's a potential seller and they want to meet about listing their home, you have to be ready to go. You can't get an opportunity to take a listing and then figure out what do I do? <clears throat> okay. Now I'm not saying that you're prospecting from nine to 12. Somebody calls at 10 o'clock and says, I want to list my house and you hang up the phone and you run over there. Okay. Man. You still got a prequal. You still have to, you know, see if you can get them to meet at two in the afternoon, whatever the case may be. But the point is, is if you have a listing, if somebody called you right, can you come over two hours and list my home? Would you be prepared to go or would you be scrambling? You have to be prepared. Now, preparation means a couple things. I wrote down here, being prepared means that you have a pre-listing package template ready to go to where all you need to do is just put together the comp. So do you have a pre-list package template? Now, it's Toolkit CMA, we've gone over. Um, some of you use different pre-listing package templates. Jocelyn, I know, has created a few for some of you. If you don't have one, put one together. If you don't know how to put one together, let us know, let myself know, let James know, Neil, Patty, Jocelyn, let somebody know, and we can kind of walk you through how to <laughs> create a very, I mean, I, basic's not basic. I say basic in a good way, basic, very clean, good listing package. That's being, do you have one? Okay. Number two, I wrote down here on being prepared is, do you know your listing presentation? How well do you know your listing presentation? <clears throat> so you should be practicing your listing presentation all the time. Now, sometimes people think that, well, I don't work on my listing presentation all the time because I don't have any listing appointments. That's true. However, if somebody calls you right now and says, can you come over in an hour? I want to talk to you about listing my home. If you're not prepared to give a great listing presentation, you're not going to get the listing. So there's a great Les Brown quote that says, it's better to be prepared for an opportunity and not have one than to have an opportunity and not be prepared. And I agree with that 100%. It's better to be prepared for an opportunity and not have one than to have an opportunity and not be prepared. There's no bigger kick in the butt than when you have finally have an opportunity to list a home and you don't know what to say and how to say it. You don't have a listing presentation ready to go. Work on your listing presentation. That's called being prepared. Okay. So having a pre-listing package is being prepared. Knowing your listing presentation is being prepared. And we're going to go into this a little bit later, but I also wrote down being prepared is knowing what's going on in their general marketplace is being prepared. And we're going to go over that a, a little bit more, but you cannot be unprepared. And here's the one thing I wrote down here on being unprepared. You can't hide being unprepared. They will, they will catch it. You know, you can't just wing it. You can't do any of those things. They will catch you being unprepared. So make sure that you're, you're prepared.
Okay, number two, I wrote down not being available. Second mistake you can't make, not being available. So what do I mean by not being available? In today's real estate market, you have to be fast, okay? Now, we obviously know working with a buyer, you have to be fast because homes are selling so quickly. But as a real estate agent, because homes are selling so quickly and sellers know that they can find other real estate agents, okay? This is an important point. Sellers know very quickly they can find another real estate agent. They know that. They know how to do it. They know they can find one. They probably have another one already in mind. They also know how great the market is because we keep telling them how great the market is and they keep reading how great the market is. And so they don't want to miss out on that opportunity, which means if a seller's looking to sell, for the most part, they want the information now. So when I say not being available, seller calls you today, it's Thursday at 338. They're interested in listing their house and you say, all right, well, you know what? Tomorrow is going to be tough. I'm taking the weekend off. You know, Monday I'm catching up. How about Tuesday at two o'clock? That's not going to work. That's not being available. You push it out that far unless it is your, your greatest client of all time, like your mother. Okay. She might go, okay, Tuesday works. But even then, she's, I guarantee you, as soon as you hang up the phone, she's going, gosh, Tuesday. I mean, geez, Louise. Okay, you can't do those types of things. You can't do those types of things. Now, again, I'm not saying that you have to drop everything and go there, but if a seller calls you and says, I'm interested in selling my home, you should try to be able to get there today. If you can't get there today, set an appointment tomorrow. But you can't push things off three, four, five days. Well, you know, but I'm going out of town on Friday. So, and I'm not coming back until Tuesday. I'm not going to be back at work until Tuesday. So I can't see him until Tuesday. Then you need to have somebody go, have somebody go take that listing. Unless you're absolutely confident again, it's your grace past client that they're open to you waiting until Tuesday. But, you know, you can't, can't do those types of things. You have to be available. But I can't stress this enough. This doesn't mean dropping everything and running over there. It just means that you have to be able to do the presentation in a reasonable amount of time. But I am serious about it in that if you can't make it to their place in three, four, five days, have somebody go. Split the deal with somebody. Find somebody say, hey, I got this lead. They, they want to list their house. I can't be there until Tuesday, but they're, but they're interviewing agents. They want to go. Can you go tomorrow? Go do a listing presentation. We'll split it 50-50. When I get back, I'll do all take care of all the other stuff. Find somebody to do that with. It's better than getting nothing, which you will get if they're ready to list their house and you can't go for four days. All right, number three, mistake that you can't afford to make on a listing presentation. This is a big one. Okay, this is a big one in today's market. Not standing out. Not standing out. The reason this is important, is it fair to assume that more than ever, sellers have access to information? Now, they might not have access to the right information because one of the biggest problems we face, as you know, is they read articles that are national based. And so they, they read something, go, well, I read this in the New York Times. Okay, but this is, you know, Los Angeles, this is Irvine, this is Marietta, this is Corona, it's a totally different world. But either way, they have access to information, which means that if you don't stand out to some capacity, they will just move on. So I, I wrote a couple of things down here. Your listing presentation should be able to reflect that you're sophisticated, you're savvy enough, you provide great enough service to be able to get them the amount that they need, the service that they need. It should be well-designed, should show that you're a professional, should reflect your brokerage or your individual branding. Okay, you have to be able to stand out. I wrote this down here. Okay, this is a big point on standing out. Why wouldn't they just pay another agent 1%? Because you know that the agents will do it. There are those companies that'll do it, right? Redfin will list your home for 1%. Why wouldn't they do that? 
they keep hearing how this market is so amazing, right? And it is pretty amazing. Homes are selling as long as they're priced right, things like that. So why wouldn't they just go list with someone that's 1%? You have to stand out. You have to be able to show them through your pre-qualification, your pre-listing, your listing presentation, your professionalism. You have to be able to show them that I'm worth the extra money. They, they, they know somebody else who's in the business, even if it's your friend. They also have another friend that's in the business, guaranteed. So why would they list with you over somebody else? You have to really go into what makes you different. So write this down. We've talked about this before. You need to have four to five value propositions as to why they should list with you over somebody else. And you need to be able to articulate them. You need to have four to five value propositions as to why they should list with you over somebody else and you need to be able to articulate them. What I mean by that is you can't just say, well, you know, I live in the neighborhood. You know, I'm born and raised here. I've sold real estate here for 20 years. Okay, great. But how does that benefit them? We do a bunch of marketing. It goes out to a bunch of websites. We are an international company, right? These are all things that could be beneficial, but you have to be able to articulate it in a way that helps them. So give you an example, right? So Mr. and Mrs. Seller, would you agree that in Southern California, we live in an international real estate market? Yes, I would agree. Yeah, we have everybody here, right? Every nationality, every language, we got it all here in Southern California. As a matter of fact, $10 billion into California alone in the last 12 months from international buyers. Did you know that? No idea. Yeah. So to market your property the best, not only do we need to market it locally and domestically, we need to market it internationally. Luckily for you, we have 10,000 offices worldwide in 70 different countries that are all going to have access to your listing through our Century 21 portal, which means that your your listing is going to get more international exposure, which could potentially lead to more buyers, which potentially could lead to more offers and more money for you. Is that something that you would like? Oh, that would be great. Boom. There's value proposition number one. Now, you, now I'm just saying that's one example. That might be one, two, three, four, whatever. You might not even use that. My point is, is that that's a value proposition that you can articulate in a way that helps them. Okay. If you know, for example, that it's a Chinese speaking neighborhood and you happen to speak Chinese, okay? Mr. and Mrs. Seller, do you know that I speak Chinese? Oh yeah, that's great. And let's be honest here, this, there's a very heavy Chinese influence in this neighborhood, right? right. So one of the values of working with me is that I will be able to communicate better with the agents and potential buyers for your property so I can make sure negotiating the best for you and getting the most amount of buyers in to see your home. Does that sounds good? Perfect. That's another way to establish a value. That's standing out. Okay. So now some of us don't speak multiple languages, present company included. Okay. So I have to come up with different value propositions. But the point is, is you have to stand out. You have to come up with four to five different things that make you stand out and you have to be able to articulate it so that the seller understands why it's a benefit to them. Okay, number four, I wrote down as far as mistakes making. Okay, this one's pretty simple, not listening. Not listening is a mistake you can't afford to make. So write this down. It's the seller's show, not yours. <laughs> it's the seller's show, not yours. It's their house. It's their money. It's their motivation. It's, it's theirs. You are there as an accommodation. You are there to help them accomplish what they want to accomplish, but it's not about you. It's not your house, your money, your show. It's theirs. It's about the seller. So you need to list out as much as you can from the sellers about and goals. Now I wrote down here, the first way you do that is by pre-qualifying. 
It is their, their situation, their goals. Now, here's the important thing. What do I mean by it's their show? One of the examples of that is they're not going to sell just because it's a hot market. When we make it our show, when we're not listening and we're telling is all we're talking about how hot the market is and what a great time it is to sell your house and all these other different things. Okay, great. But that's not the reason they're selling. There's something they're going to do with the money, whether it's their house, cash out and put it in the bank, invest in another business, give it to somebody else. There's something they're going to do with the proceeds. So when we're not listening, we're just talking about how hot the market is. And that's not the real reason they're going to do it. Because if the reason they're selling is simply because, well, the market's so good, we figured we'd give it a shot. They're, it's going to be so freaking overpriced and, and they're never going to budge on any of the terms. It's going to be expired. You want to know how an, a listing expires in 2021? That's how. When they're selling just simply because the market's hot. That's not why. You have to listen to figure out more about their situation and goals. Okay. Now you do have to tell them what they can expect while working with you. Okay. And how you're going to help them accomplish, but it's really about listening to what they need. Okay. They know what they want. Figure that out. Also in terms of listening, look for clues that the seller's ready to, to wrap this up. Okay. Don't sell past the close. Don't talk yourself out of the deal. See, sometimes we do that. I'll test some of you every so often when we do some role plays or something like that, is that I'll just give you the sense that I'm ready to go. You'll, I'll maybe give you an objection and then I'll say, yeah, that sounds good. And then you'll keep going. And it's like, I just, I just told you it sounds good. Close. Right? Whenever they give you the sense that, okay, yeah, that sounds good. Let's make this happen. And then what I'm also going to do... Stop. Listen. Okay. George, um, Barry tells this story about George Graham, who's analytical. So this is a very hard thing for an analytical to, to not be able to go through the whole process because analytical, the whole process. Okay. Expressives and drivers sometimes don't. So he tells a story about George Graham. George Graham sends out the, the does the pre-qualifying, sends the pre-listing package to this past client, all these other different things. Right? George Graham goes to the house, door opens slightly, they hand the package to George, they close the door. George is kind of perplexed. He, what's going on here? He looks at the package, opens it up. The client had signed everything. They signed all the documents, signed the listing agreement, the whole thing. George knocks on the door. So it says, what do you want, George? We already gave you the package. And he says, but I haven't done my presentation yet. <laughs> it's a true story, you know, because he just couldn't accept the fact that I, what do you mean? I haven't even done my presentation yet. Who cares? When you have a chance to close close let them tell you oh i want more information but when they give you that sense that they're ready to go close don't talk yourself out of the deal and as soon as they sign get the hell out of there okay some of us will talk ourselves out of this situation but you can figure that out by listening okay number five number five mistake you can't afford to make in presentation is not being efficient not being efficient this is like Mike Ferry 101, not being efficient. What I mean by not being efficient is don't take this the wrong way. Okay, some of you will, and I'll probably, let's see, we have 27. By the time I'm done with this statement, we'll have 24. Okay, don't take this the wrong way. They don't want you there very long. Unless it's like a family member and you're, there for Sunday dinner and you happen to also be talking about taking their listing. Okay. That's a different story. That's not what I'm saying. But if you're going over to someone's house specifically just to take a listing, they don't want you there very long. I understand you're a very nice person. I think you're nice. I like that we're on zoom all day and we have coaching calls and training calls. I think you're fantastic. They don't want you there very long. 
So don't be there for too long. Be efficient. One of the ways you can be efficient is one by pre-qualifying. So you know more about them before you even get there. Okay. Number two is sending a pre-listing package. That way they know already a little bit about who you are, how you're going to get the home sold, your plan of action. And they have a general idea of what the comps are in the area. They're probably going to go over them with you. So when you get there, it's, I already know about you. You already know about me. You already know about the market. Let's get down to the nitty gritty. This shouldn't take very long. Barring a bunch of questions or things like that, this shouldn't take very long. Let's talk about listing your home. But you can be efficient by doing these types of very basic things. Okay. When you get there, it, it's about listing their property. It, it's not about anything else. They don't, they don't need a friend. Okay. There's a, there's, a, there's a line that says they want to work with people they like. That part's true. But do you, not, do you want to know what makes them like you is when they feel that they, you can help them. That's what, that's how they will like you. Well, they want to work with somebody they like. That's correct. They will not like you if you spend out, think about this. Okay. Have you ever, be honest. Are there people in your life, including family, that you're always hesitant about inviting over to your house because you know they'll stay too long? You know you do. You know you do. There are people that you are hesitant inviting over because you know they're going to stay too long. Okay? That's what we're talking about. They want to work with someone they like, but what they like is if you can help them get what they want in the time they want. Won't that be great? That'd be great. Okay, so be more efficient. Number six, mistake you can't afford to make. Pretty simple, not knowing your numbers. This goes back to, some, to the very thought of sellers have more access to information than ever. They can stock Redfin. They can stock Zillow. They know what the listings are going on. They know what the prices are. They know what's new on the market. They know all that stuff. They don't know all the comments, right? They don't know all those types of things. They don't know what expired or canceled, but they know what's active. They know what's sold. They know what's going on. They're very savvy. So write this down. The seller should never know more about the market than you. And in today's world, that's not a crazy statement. In today's world, it is not crazy that a seller could know more about the current marketplace more than you because they're over these online websites. They're all over these articles. They're all over the mailers coming in. So you have to over know your numbers. You have to know if, if a house down the street sold two days ago, you need to know what it sold for. If there's a for sale by owner in the neighborhood, you need to know because the seller will say, oh, what about that for sale by owner that's, uh, that's one block down? I drove by it the other day. What's that selling for? You need to know these things. So you need to know your numbers. You need to know what's going on in the community. You need to know, you know if they're building something across the street. You need to know if they're tearing something down. You need to know what they're do if they're trying to revitalize something in the marketplace. But here's the one thing that they don't have access to that you do have access to that's very helpful. They don't know what didn't sell. They don't know what expired, what canceled. They don't know that because they don't show that on Redfin or things like that. Why important? Because they say, they see these listings. Well, this one's listed for 850. This one's listed for 870. Mine should definitely get 900. Ah, interesting you bring that up, Mr. Ms. Seller, because did you happen to see this property when it was listed last month? Oh, yeah, what, I thought it sold. No, it didn't sell. It was listed for 900. It expired, meaning no one bought it. Why do you think no one bought it? Well, the price was probably too high. Exactly. So why should we list your home at 900,000 when I have proof here that it won't sell? They don't know what didn't sell. 
So that's one of the numbers you have in your benefit. Okay, so make sure you know those types of things. <clears throat> you have to know your numbers. You have to know what's going on in the marketplace. Okay, they don't know the withdrawals. They don't know all these other different things. They just assume everything's sold. Okay, there's no way a home didn't sell in this marketplace. What they also don't have access to is they don't have access to other agents. So when they see something that, that went pending or something that sold, their mindset automatically goes, probably had a bunch of offers on that property. And you talk to the agent, the agent says, oh, we had one. Wow, okay. They don't have access to how many offers were there, how many showings there were. There were. Now that can be good or bad. But you have to know the numbers. The clients have more information than ever. So you have to be able to overcome that. Now, here's an important thing, which means that if you're going to take a listing that's outside of your normal neighborhood, before you go on that listing, you need to spend a bunch of time making sure that you're going over the numbers and drive around the neighborhood before you go on the listing. You should probably do that even in listings in your own neighborhood because there are, is anybody here guilty, including myself, of not always knowing 100% of what's going on in their own neighborhood? <laughs> you know, you ever run into a situation where you're driving down the street and going, well, that's new. When did that happen? When did they build that? You're looking for a restaurant and you realize that it's been closed for five years. Huh, had no idea. You should always drive around the neighborhood. So every day, Neil talks about this at 9 a.m. every morning. Do a quick CMA of your marketplace. Know how many sold, how many went pending, what are the price points, how many expired, how many closed. Go to InfoSparks, know what's going on in the marketplace. Preview property. If you don't want to preview in person or you can't preview because not all listings are allowing you to do that, preview virtually. Find the property, look at the 3D tours, do the Google Street View. You have to know your numbers. You have to know what's going on because they do. And so if they start talking about the market and you're umming and on your way through it, they know that you don't know and they know more than you do. And why would they give you money if they know more than you do? Okay, it's a confidence thing. Okay, three more. Number seven, mistake you can't afford to make is not communicating. Not communicating. So what I mean by not communicating is that if they have a question or they're looking for something specific, you have to be able to communicate with them that you know the answer and that you're addressing their situation. So give you an example of that. You're pre-qualifying somebody. They say, well, I'm interviewing two other agents. I'm really looking for an agent that can do X. You go to the presentation and you don't communicate whatsoever about that thing that they wanted. You're not going to get the listing, no matter how great everything else is. If they want to address something, you have to address it. You have to communicate. If they have a question, answer it crazy policy. If they have a question, answer it. I, I know. I get it. I get it. I thought long and hard about some of these. Okay. You have to be able to effectively communicate with them. Remember, in their mind, the mind of some of these sellers, they think that when you're negotiating deals, that it's like stuff you see on TV, like hostage negotiations, okay? That the buyer's gonna come with this and you're gonna be super duper agent X that's gonna come up with these amazing negotiation skills and you're gonna communicate with them and bam, you're gonna get in their favor. That's what they're thinking. That's what they think they're paying for. Now, the reality is it's not that difficult. It's no counter, <laughs> like <laughs> we're gonna counter you for this price. You know, we want you to waive this. It's not hardcore negotiating, but they think you can't communicate to the questions that they're asking, or you can't communicate effectively just giving your presentation. They won't list with you. This is why point number seven, you hate me on this. The word um 
has to be eliminated from your vocabulary. Part of communicating is communicating effectively and um eliminates all effective communication. So got to work on that. Okay, number eight, mistake you can't make, not having some sort of online presence. Not having some sort of online presence. Now, okay. why is this important? This is important. I, now, let me back up. You don't have to be an influencer. Okay. For those of you that don't know what an influencer is, it's someone that has a lot of people follow them and they make a living off of like social media. Okay. So you don't have to be that. They just need to know that you have some sort of online presence, a website, uh, some sort of maybe a Facebook page or something, Instagram page, something. Because they think that everything's coming online. So you have to have some sort of online presence because what you can't do is say that you're going to do all this online marketing and yet they can't find you online. Well, how are you, how can I trust you to do all this online marketing if you don't have have a presence online? I can't find you. So have something, a basic of a website. Now being part of Century 21, you get a website. If you don't know how to create that, it's in Zap. If you don't know what Zap is, let myself, James, Patty, Neil, or Jocelyn know, um, or even Jonathan or Adina, even at this point, Adina's our new admin in Irvine. She's fantastic. Um, Michelle's great in Kavina. Jonathan's obviously a rock star in, in Walnut. We can show you how to do that stuff in Zap and help you build a website or help create another individual website for you, but have something like that. Again, if you need help, like Robert, I, I've always wanted to do like a Facebook page or an Instagram page, but I don't even know where to start. Set up a meeting with Jocelyn. This is stuff that she can do and help out, but you, you need to at least have something, okay? Now, here's what else you need. You need like a current photo because they're not gonna trust you with an online presence with your prom photos. Okay. Now, some of you might be just above prom age, and so maybe that's okay. <laughs> okay. But some of you are slightly above prom age. Okay. So you probably shouldn't have your prom photos as your photos online. Okay. Because it doesn't look good. The black and white photos, again, you know, I got digital cameras and color TV. Okay. I don't know. It's wild stuff. Some of you have like the black and white photos. You know, some of your photos are just not what you look like. So again, I, I'm looking at from the eyes of a seller. I'm trusting you to take my beautifully redone property and sell it. And you're going to have this great online presence. And yet you haven't had a headshot change in 25, 30 years. It, it, it doesn't match is what I'm saying, okay? So you need to have some of this online presence stuff figured out, okay? Try to, if you're closing deals, try to get reviews, try to get testimonials, have a bio, have an agent page, talk about your expertise. You need to have this kind of stuff, okay? So having some sort of online presence. Again, you don't have to spend any money. You don't have to be an influencer. This is not stuff that you have to spend a bunch of time on. Just very basic to where they can at least find you. All right. If nothing else, at least have a website, which you get as part of your franchise fee with Century 21. If you just at least want to do that, we can make it look very nice. Okay. Have something there. Okay. And then number nine, number nine, I, I think this is kind of important. Okay. I think they're all important, but this one, I, I would, I would really, this is a mindset shift. Listening presentation you can't make is being short-sighted being short-sighted so here's what i mean by being short-sighted being short-sighted means that here we are it's a crazy market homes are selling like that and you're looking at this listing as boom listing i can get it off the market in 10 days maybe even less i get paid 30 days later 40 days i got 10 15 20 grand in my account 
you're looking at this as a standalone transaction. You're looking at this as a standalone transaction instead of looking at this as a showcase for your next clients. You're missing the opportunity to set yourself up for future business. Don't look at this listing as a standalone transaction. Look at this listing as I got this listing. This is my chance to showcase myself to this client who could then be my repeat client or referral client or showcase myself to the neighborhood that this is who I am. This is why you want to list with me. Because if you don't, you're missing the opportunity for business. Okay. That's being short-sighted. Don't be short-sighted. We talk about this all the time. You know, I think, in my opinion, it doesn't make it right or wrong. This is just my personal opinion. I think every single listing should have Matterport 3D. I think that should be every single listing. Now, you might say, yeah, but Robert, that's like $150, $200. You know, maybe it's a hundred. I think, they, I think you can get it as low as like a hundred, depending on the, the size of the house. Somewhere between a hundred and two hundred dollars. Why would I do that when the home's going to fly off the market? Because you're being short-sighted and you're just selling this one. But if your listing has Matterport 3D and other listings don't, whose listing stands out better to the next seller? Yours does. I think you should have professional photos on every listing. Oh gosh, Robert, that's another $150, $200. Depending on the size of the house, might be a little bit more. That's right. But your listing's going to look better than when you go in with your cell phone. Yeah, it's going to cost you an extra couple hundred dollars, but you're setting yourself up to look better to the neighborhood, to look better to that seller who could refer you a deal for another 10, 15 grand. And would it cost you a few hundred dollars? I think every listing should have Matterport 3D. I think every listing should have professional photographers. I, I, just, I just think that's, that's how you're taking this deal and showcasing your expertise to the next, to the next deal. And then what you can do is the seller loves that. They know that no one else is doing all these different things because it's such a crazy market and that you're not treating their home as just a, hey, you know what, let's just throw it on there because they know that stuff. They know, they know when you're just, all right, let's just throw it on there. Let's get this deal done as opposed to I'm going all in. I'm going all in even though this might be sold in three days. That's being don't. Use this as a way to showcase your talents for the next deal. All right, so look, so those are nine different mistakes you can't afford to make on the listing presentation. So some of them you've probably heard many times before. Some of them, maybe it's you've just heard it a different way because you don't hear it from the mistake instead of, you know, this is what you should or shouldn't do. But I think these are really some good stuff for you to utilize moving forward because we have to consistently try to beat the competition and get more listings. So there you go. Questions on any of that stuff? Yeah, Robert, I knew it was a great class. I planned to, to attend, but I had to take care of some issues. So I, I missed one to eight. Can you just tell me quickly? I'll write quick. <laughs> I got an eight, nine. I missed one to seven. <laughs> All right, number one. Um, yeah. the, these are mistakes you can't make. Number one is being unprepared. Oh yeah. Okay. Number two is not being available. Not be available. So not being available, meaning that if they want to list their home, you can't say, all right, um, I can be there in four or five days. Oh yeah. Okay. Okay. Number three. Number three is not standing out. So okay. essentially having four to five different value propositions. Okay. As to why they should list with you. Okay. Number, number four? four is number four is not listening. Okay. Okay. Look for what when the client's ready to close. Close. Don't talk past the close. Mm -hmm. Number five is not being efficient. Okay. They don't want you there for two hours, so send a pre-listing package, pre-qualify. Okay. Make sure you're efficient with your time and their time. Number six is not knowing your numbers. Okay. Know what's going on in the market because they do. They have access to a lot of information. 
Okay. And number seven is not communicating effectively. Okay. Number eight. Number eight is not having an online presence. Oh yeah. Oh my gosh. This is so true. Nowadays, everybody check Robert, you out first. Robert, I have a question on number four. Would you mind repeating how you handled that objection? Um, I didn't quite get to write it all. And I like the way you handled it where um, the exposure with uh we there's 10,000. Oh, right, right. Okay. So, so number three is part of not standing out, having a few different value propositions. So the way, one of the value propositions you can use from the company standpoint is to agree that in Southern California, an international real estate market. Well, yeah, I would. Yeah, of course we do. I mean, we have everything here. We have every ethnicity, we have every language, we have everything. As a matter of fact, in the last 12 months, $10 billion has come to the real estate market in California from international buyers. Okay. Which means, which means to market your property effectively Okay. We not only need to market it locally and domestically. Locally and domestically. But internationally as well. But internationally as well. Okay. Lucky, lucky for you, we have... 10,000 offices across 70 countries worldwide. It says 6,900. Across what? Across we have 10,000 offices across what? 70 countries. 70 countries. Worldwide. Yvonne, I'll get to that in a second. Worldwide that all have access to your listing through the Century 21 portal. Okay, thank you. Which means you're gonna have more potential buyers, which could lead to more offers and more money. For Is sure, that repeat that again. Which could lead to more buyers which could lead to more potential money. You're right. Is that what you want? Well, yes, it is. Exactly. Great. So Yvonne, to answer your question. Yeah, I, I know. Number, it's about Asia. Asia flyer. That's a 6,900 square. Um, yeah, the, the total number has been updated for, across all countries is over 10,000. OK. 10000 dollars. There you go. That too. You see, just take this notes, very brief one. Yeah, I know all those, you know, but those details are very important too. So did you record this session, Robert? Probably not. <laughs> I knew it. <laughs> <laughs> it did. It says recording on the top. It does it. Oh, work. really? Yes, it does. <laughs> Oh, come on, oh, Robert. Please right. be nice. Be nice, Robert. <laughs> yeah. I, I really, I did, I'm not the one who hit record. So Neil must have just been kept the recorder on the entire time. So gosh, I hope nobody said anything bad between like one and 3.30 <laughs> uh, here on record. All right, cool. Well, it's recorded. So yeah, maybe do this again some other time. Or I can just get the recording and send it to you. Yeah, that's, that's right. true. <laughs> record and send it to me. I would that's appreciate easier. it. That helped me get more listings, which go. could mean more money to the company. <laughs> Big fan. You know that's what true. you want. Big fan. That's true, Yvonne. Big fan. Big fan. <laughs> All right, good job, everybody. If you need anything, let me know. I'll see if I can get this to Jesse and have him um, fix this all up and break this up over the next uh, week or so. 
All right. If you need anything, if you have any questions, let me know. Thank you, Robert. Thank you. You can send me a copy as well, Robert. I appreciate right. it. I will. We'll get that. It's Jesse up. on vacation, right? Okay. He just got back today. So All right. it's time to put him today. to work. He'll, he'll probably be a fully functional employee. Well, I don't know if he's ever a fully functional employee. No, I'm just kidding. But he'll probably be a uh, functional employee tomorrow. He's got, a, he's got, I have no idea how many emails he had today. So, but yes, he's back. You know, Robert, I was going to say that um, right now, I just felt like saying anything else, anything else that you want us to do? Because I'm, I'm thinking everyone keeps saying it's so easy to earn our commissions just so quickly. And then I'm looking at the list on top of this. We have to prospect and do everything else. So I'm thinking like, I feel like a very happy clown, you know, juggling a couple of little things. <laughs> Time. <laughs> well, right. Actually, can you help us with a couple more uh, uh, proposition? Sure. I know you're talking about this Chinese, sure. but sure. what sure. about people don't speak Chinese? Okay, well then don't say that you do. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I, said, I know you said that there's more. All right, so a so couple few? other value propositions. Sure, sure, I can help you out with a, a few more of those. So yeah, the international one, if you know it, they speak a certain language, you have that one. So another one could be if you know your stats or the company stats. So, you know, one of it could be, you know, sell or one of the things you want to list with me. Do you know that the average days market in your town is 34 days? Wow, I didn't know that. I thought they were selling quickly, right? Here's the stat shows 34 days. On average, my listings are selling in 15 days. So I'm getting sellers home sold in about half the time what the average is in the city. So let me, do you find that valuable? Yeah, okay. That's one of the reasons you want to list with me. So that could be another value proposition. The the comp I, we, I could look up some company stats. If you don't have individual stats, I could look up some. I did this for someone the other day um, for LA County because they didn't have their own stats. The last 12 months, LA County, the average days on market for the entire county, they didn't have a specific, they didn't want a specific city. For the entire county was 28 days and ours was 20 days. So it was like 30% faster than the competition. So there's that. If you know your average price to listing ratio, you could use that too. So Mr. and Mrs. Seller, you know, as you can see here, the average home in your area is selling for 1% above list price. My listings or my company listings, depending on what stat you wanna look, are selling on an average 2.5% above list price which means on average, we're getting our sellers one and a half percent more money. So for a $600,000 property, that's $9,000. Would you like 9,000 additional dollars? Yeah, absolutely. Would. Okay, great. And if you want to split that with me, you know, you're more than welcome to, and you can have any, you know, their personality style, you can do something like that. So you could use the price above uh, listing or, or just, you don't have to do above listing, just price compared to um, everyone else. And then if you have both, if you have, if you're getting it sold faster and for more money, you could say, so therefore, Mr. Masella, on average, I'm getting my sellers one and a half percent more money in half the time. So you could do, that could be another value position. Um, another one you could do would be knowing the market. So Mr. And Mrs. Seller, I don't know if this, but I asked, do you know what preview property means? Has any agent told you that? They're going to say no, no. Okay. Well, previewing property means that when homes are for sale, that we see the property. So we know exactly what's going on in the marketplace. Okay. So I've seen in your mark for the last, pick a number, month, six months, one year, two year, 20 years, whatever. I've seen 500 properties in your marketplace over the last 24 months. 
I would bet that if you talk to any other real estate in the, you'll be lucky if you got five. And I've done 500. So would you say that I probably know value of homes and the marketplace better than the competition because I've seen 500 homes in the last two years? Yeah, I think you would. Okay. So you could use previewing property as a, as a value proposition. My favorites, my favorite value propositions are the, the listing plan of action, the schedule and the copy of the affiliates. So one of the other things, Mr. and Mrs. So that I do is I provided with you here with a, a 18, 27, 33, whatever point plan of action you have, plan of action. That goes over specifically what I'm going to do to get your home sold from the time we sign the contract to the time I deliver you the check. Now, would you agree that having a specific plan of action is very valuable? Yes, I would. Okay, great. That's one of the great things listening with me is I'm going to do that. I'm going to give this to you. On top of that, Mr. and Mrs. Seller, one of the value propositions of listening with me, you're going to get a kick out of this, is you're going to get to hold me accountable. Can I tell you what that means? Sure. Every Friday between 1 and 3 p.m., you, I'm going to get on the phone with me and I'm going to say, pull out that plan of action. And you're going to get to ask me, Robert, did you do number two? Say, yep. Did you do number five? And I'm going to say, yep. And if I didn't say anything, you can get on my case. And if I didn't do something, you can get on my case. So you get to hold me accountable. Wow, that's great. Okay. The other reason you want to work with me is I'm going to provide you with a copy of my schedule. So I'm giving you my schedule so you can see exactly what I'm doing on a daily basis. Do you find that helpful? Yeah, you find that helpful. You want to know what's more helpful? Sure. I bet if you ask any other agent, they're not going to give it to you. You want to know why? Why? They don't have one. So do you want to put your listing, your biggest financial transaction with someone that doesn't even have a schedule? Nope. Okay. There's another value proposition. On top of that, Mr. Seller, the, the beauty, but also downside of California, there's a lot of people involved in this transaction. Have you ever sold or bought a home before? Yeah, I have. Well, then you know that there's two agents, there's a buyer, there's a seller, there's title, there's escrow, there's transaction coordinators, there's warranty people. If you're to condo, there's HOAs, there's homeowners insurance, there's all these different people, right? Right. Okay. Well, I've provided a list here for you of all the people that are going to be involved with this. So you have their names, their phone numbers, their emails, and exactly what they can help you with. This is person A, who's going to be the escrow officer. This is person B, who's going to be the transaction coordinator. Here's person C, who's going to be running your title. This, 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 this. Do you think this is helpful, having this all organized? Absolutely. Do you think any other agent's going to be this organized with schedules and plans of actions and list of, of affiliates? Probably not. This is one of the reasons you want to work with me is this is how organized and professional I am, which is probably important for your biggest financial transaction. Wouldn't you agree? I would agree. Okay, great. So there's value propositions. If you've sold something in the area or sold a lot of homes in the area, you can use that. So Mr. and Mrs. Seller, over the last 10 years, I've sold 50 homes in your marketplace. And I've had none of them expire. <laughs> so as far as knowing this marketplace and know what it takes to get a property sold in this marketplace, I'm as confident as anyone else that you have. So you can use your experience in that particular marketplace to do that. One of the value propositions you can use if it happens to be an expired or a canceled, which is one of my favorites, no one uses it, but it's still one of my favorites, is... If you have an expired or canceled, what I would do is take whatever listing you recently closed or whatever one, if you don't have one, use the company one, okay? That closed in that area, in that price range. Here's what I mean. Find an expired, let's say you closed a property in Arcadia for $850,000. What I would do is go back two years and find every canceled and, and expired between the price range of say 700 and a million in the city of Arcadia. There might only be 20, okay? In, what, in, in whatever city, I'm using Arcadia as an example. Mr. and Mrs. Seller, I saw that your home expired. I just sold a property in your city, 
in your price range. We had 35 showings, 10 offers, and it sold for $50,000 above list price. So I know I can sell a home in this marketplace. Would you like to get together so I can show you how I did it? I got proof. I got proof that I can sell your home. I just sold one in your city in your price range with 10 offers and sold for $50,000 above list price. That's a value proposition. And if you have proof that you can sell their home, you could use that for cancels or expireds. So you can use those types of things. And then again, you could just keep doing, you know, whatever your, your history is in the area. Some people want you to know the market as far as, you know, like if you're in Pasadena, for example, it's damn near impossible to get a listing in Pasadena. If you don't work there, live there, do stuff there, it's hard. So there might be other cities like that where the value proposition might be that you work there, you live there, your kids go to school there, your grandmother lives there and, you know, all these other different things. So depending on certain cities, that could be a value proposition. If, if that's the, the type of case, cities like Beverly Hills don't care, you know, um, not to say that we do business in Beverly Hills, but places like other cities that are out there don't really care too much, but some cities, it's a big deal that you're a part of the community. So if it's a city like that, you know, use, use that as a value proposition. So you could use things like that. You could use the office as a value proposition. Well, what do you mean? Well, you know, Mr. and Mrs. Seller, whenever I take a listing, we have what's called a company hot list. What that does is that for four days, an email goes every day for four days, an email goes out to every agent in our company showcasing our new listings. Why that's important to you is because our office of the 10,000 offices in the world for Century 21 our office is the 15th highest producing office in the world. And so, which means we have a lot of agents that are very productive and probably have a lot of buyers leads and they're going to get front and center to your listing for four straight days in their email through the company hot list. Do you think that could be beneficial? Yeah, of course it could be. There you go. So you could use things like the company. You could also use other value propositions as Mr. and Mrs. Seller. You know, the good and bad for you in this marketplace is that homes are selling so quickly. Can I explain that to you? Sure. The good is your homes could probably sell very quickly. The downside is many agents, because the home selling so quickly, try to get off on the cheap. The value of working with me is that even if your home was going to sell in one day, I'm still going to give you the top of the line service. I'm going to Matterport 3D. I'm going to get a professional photographer because I think your listing deserves the best. And I'm not going to cheap out on any of this stuff, even in this type of market. Do you think that's valuable? Do, would you like to have an agent that treats your listing the same way? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm going to do all this, 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 and this. Every, you know, Mr. Miseller, I'm also going to create an individual property website for your listing because every listing goes on the MLS, but not every listing has its own domain. 123mainstreet.c21.com at no cost to you. We create that for you. And as soon as that's created, which will probably be a few days, I'm going to send that out to you so you can see your own listing website. So you'll have all the MLS stuff, but we're going to promote your, your individual listing as well. Boy, I need the recorder, <laughs> the recording. <laughs> so many good things. I'm like, I'm like Captain America. You know, I could just do this all day. I, 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 Captain. <laughs> <laughs> So there you go. There's, I don't know, Thank 15, you. there's about 15 or however many I just rambled off there real quick. So luckily this thing is still recording because I don't know what the hell I just said. That's great. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I know what I said. So there you go. So that's your little bit. And then, you know, come up with more that you feel are beneficial that are helpful, but you have to have, but the key 
to anyone that's still listening is it's not just having the value proposition. You have to articulate it. Everything I just did, I articulated as to why it's helpful for the seller. And then I asked the question at the end, do you think that would be helpful? You have to be able to articulate why it's a benefit to them. That's the key. All right. Good job, everybody. If you need anything, let me know. I'll have uh, Jesse work on this recording. Um, again, I know he's kind of swamped, so we'll probably have this up sometime next week, but I'll, uh, I'll see if I can get that out to you. How are you going to give that to us if you get it? Send an email to us, the copy? I'll, se I'll send out. Well, we'll, I'll have him. Yeah, I'll just have him email it out. Okay. Thank you so much. Really good. Awesome. I'll tell Neil to give you one day off. For being so good, working well, so you know, hard. Yvonne, to be fair, he gives me Sunday off every week. <laughs> every week without fail. I don't even have to ask anymore. I just I already know that Sundays I'm off. So, you know, so kind of him. He's very thoughtful <laughs> in that way. You know, that's the amiable in Neil, you know, as I get Sundays off every week. So there you go. <laughs> Thank you, Robert. We appreciate you. Nah, no problem. No problem. Good stuff. All right. If you need anything, let me know. I'm going to do some more stuff. Thank you. Thank you, Robert. You're welcome. You're welcome. Thank you, Robert. Thank you for being here. Yes. Thank you, Robert. Okay. Thanks for being here.